Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about the film American Pop from 1981. American Pop was Ralph Bakshi's attempt at doing something more personal. After his previous film, Lord of the Rings, had come out and actually was quite a success, Ralph Bakshi wanted to do something else. He wanted to do something different, and thus the idea of American Pop was born. Now, even though he says it's something personal, it's not directly based on his experience or his family's experience. It's kind of general in that fact, but he wanted to work on something different rather than the inappropriate cartoons he'd worked or before or a fantasy film like Wizards or Lord of the Rings, this is really a more mature artistic step for Ralph Bakshi. Something that should be noted about Ralph Bakshi is he's actually at the time was one of the few animators who is making animated films for adults and they were actually doing well at the box office and there really hasn't been anyone in america at least to really take the reins from that who's just making very mature animated films i'm not saying pixar or anything aren't making mature animated films but those aren't films targeted at adult audiences the way ralph bakshi did now that might be because a lot of more trippier druggy movies were actually fairly popular in the late 70s early 80s and as that culture kind of dimmed out ralph bakshi stuff couldn't survive that's probably why but it is interesting that through most of his career he was fairly successful he could have wide release animated films that were for adults and now over 30 years later we find that to be almost impossible which is kind of a sad state of affairs but it shows that Bakshi really wasn't taking that for granted American pop it has its trippy moments and such but it's more about this family and the four generations that have evolved from the immigrants who came to America in the early 1900s and went through the rise of American in popular music and it shows how smart of a storyteller Bakshi could be it probably also shows the faults of his style and his storytelling ability but I think it's one of the Bakshi films that affected me the most and people often consider it his best film I haven't seen all his films so I kind of almost don't want to say that but of the Bakshi films I've seen I've seen more of them than I haven't seen I have to say this is probably my favorite and it shows kind of what he could do with animation and how great of an animation director he could be and how talented and how smart he really was. Four generations of Russian Jewish immigrants in America. They come over after being persecuted in Russia and Zami, I think his name is, comes over and starts working in a burlesque house and hanging out there and through that kind of becomes a clown and an entertainer until he is shot in the throat during World War One during a performance for the USO tour. Then his son, Benny, who becomes kind of a genius jazz musician who plays for a while but then he enlists in World War Two and he's killed but his his son, Tony, starts as like kind of a nihilist beat poet and then becomes a songwriter for a late 60s band that's kind of based on half Jefferson Airplane, half Janis Joplin and Big Brother and the Holding Company. What exactly it is, I'm not sure, but he was the songwriter for the band until the lead singer, who's a gray slick Janis Joplin amalgamation, dies. He has a kid previously before he forms this band when he goes off on the road because he's a beatnik and stuff and has a tryst with a Kansas woman and then he has a son, Pete, or Little Petey. And Little Petey becomes the 80s rock star that kind of sums it all up in kind of like a postmodern amalgamation of everything because in a lot of ways this film represents music of the time, music of each era. You go from jazz, you go from ragtime, you go from burlesque, you go up to punk really. You hear all the musics of the era and when Pete happens and becomes the real star and he's the one who finally becomes a huge success, it's an interesting way to sum it up because his music is not punk it's not new wave it's not when you'd say like oh this was the music of the time it's like music of the late 70s early 80s was really a time of postmodernism, and especially in music and movies and he does bob seger's night train and a lot of songs that sound like 50s rock and roll but done up in more of like an 80s production quality way i mean punk is postmodern and a lot of rock and roll is but this feels extra postmodern, like it's taking music from before and making it more modern and it feels like like the perfect way to have the end rock star be. And I'm not really spoiling anything, to be honest, because you already know it's a story of four generations, and you can probably tell by the trailer it doesn't work out so well. One of the things I really like about this multi-generational story is Bakshi doesn't do it in a way that when you think of epic kind of prestige films, you think of someone who's very, like, cautious about it and safe. They'll say bad things about a certain generation, but they'll do it kind of through rose tinted glasses. And Bakshi doesn't really care about that. Bakshi is probably even more critical 
critical of his own generation than any generation, but he's critical of the other generations as well and notices the faults of those times and all the bad things that were going on. That's something I really like about this movie. I don't like it when stories from the past make it kind of seem like, oh, it was the time where men were men and women were women. And it feels like every time period in America throughout, or at least a majority of the 20th century, because it kind of ends in the early 80s, he kind of doesn't really care about all the faults of those times when you go from gangsters and bootleggers to World War II, World War I, all the heroin addiction and terrible drug addiction that was going on from the 1960s rock scene. He just doesn't really want to show you like, oh, they were geniuses and they were casualties of their time. He's kind of showing how the times crept up on them and the faults of them as people and how that kind of led to a different generation and those changes. I am often interested in when I look back at, since I see a lot of older films and I think about how generations are different and storytelling is different, but I often think about how they're the same. And you get that throughout and you see how generations change but do stay the same this love of music that everyone has throughout this film each of the generations of men that are in this film have a love of music whether it's jazz whether it's 60s rock and roll whether it's just being an entertainer whether it's in vaudeville whether it's being more of a rock star in the early 80s it shows this love of art and music and i think there is generational similarities that people often don't want to examine they always want to look like they're unique i often think about that like my grandmother would write poetry and paint even to the end of her life and then my dad has always been very interested in photography and now I'm doing these reviews and I've worked on animation and whatnot and I think there's a certain love of art that goes throughout my family that probably resulted in me and probably that my children and my grandchildren will continue that tradition on and I think that's something that you can't deny that happens throughout various generations and Bakshi looks at it in a very unceremonious way like these certain things happen and eventually it results in something quite historic. It could not result in something quite historic. Most of the time it really doesn't and I think with the rock star Petey at the end or Pete, I think that's a way to kind of sum it all up and wrap it up with a bow which certainly works for the film and I think Bakshi knew how to evolve this but he sometimes it feels like he's skimming through the history of the 20th century in America like he's just showing little tidbits of certain things. In some ways like it works for it because if you get sick of a particular character you know it's going to move on and it almost feels like an anthology film but what doesn't work about most anthology films which is is that it has several different directors working on one project and trying to tell one vision that doesn't really work but since this is one director it does actually work fairly well and since it jumps around through time you definitely see the passage of time and how families change and how their certain eras begat other eras and, and how the irresponsibilities of some generations created other generations or the responsibility of them created other generations and the faults and the pros of each of them and what that created. I honestly like that a lot and I like what he did with it and shows being unceremonious about a lot of history and past generations is something that appeals to me a lot more but I think it makes better storytelling because in the end life is unceremonious you know that is a construct that we made up for storytelling to kind of show the thing with, with rose tinted glasses and be like that's when men were men and life was perfect unlike now because we have the internet and Facebook's ruined everything or something. I get sick of that and you see that a lot at Oscar time but this is an American epic that I can really get behind. Bakshi did use a lot of rotoscoping in this film and he tried to up the animation with the rotoscoping because rotoscoping doesn't show the subtlety and emotions that he really needed from a lot of these scenes but it wasn't really handicapped at all when I read that after I saw it I thought like I actually felt like I got a lot of the emotions. I thought he did a better job animating this than he did with his previous film Lord of the Rings. I think this is a huge leap forward not just in terms of storytelling but also in terms of the animation the technical side of american pop is so impressive it really just like such a huge leap forward some of the backgrounds he does are just wonderful to look at specifically the animation to the level of detail he has on the faces which you absolutely need and all the music that goes throughout it you really do feel like you've been through something like i felt like i watched a film that was double the length and i don't mean that in a painful way i just got so into it and time just seemed to be going faster and faster faster while you're watching this. It's a really engrossing experience. You really feel like you're in it and you're just watching everything form and change and you're seeing this family keep going and changing and face tragedy and how that changes things and changes these people. It's really about generations and how those generations started certain things and you can get really sick of people. I think the character of Tony seems to be the least likable which is interesting because I think when you look at most directors when they look at the era that they existed in it's usually a little more favorable but he looks at it 
as like just you know that Tony's just a junkie and an asshole before that when he was like kind of this beat poet guy and how he's very irresponsible and how he's kind of a terrible person and how that begat the punk that would come after it because they were kind of so self-involved they weren't really thinking about anyone else and how that, that punk anger kind of that just came out of it because Tony was such an absentee dad or we're so to believe it how Tony and Pete meet is a little bit of a leap since they're his bands touring in Kansas and Pete just suddenly backstage I kind of just go with it Ralph actually used a lot of not just actors that he wrote a scope but also footage they use whole footage from Public Enemy which of course I did recognize they do it well enough that if you didn't know you wouldn't know and I thought the rotoscoping was better in this than in Lord of the Rings he uses archival footage in a lot of his films but in this there's certain archival footage that I recognize the footage and the movements to it there are certain problems back she had with Lord of the Rings and that wasn't a production that turned out very well for him he really wasn't happy with how that film ended up but this almost feels like he he was like I really want to make a very big magnum artistic opus and I don't think anyone but Ralph Bakshi could have made this because of how almost cruel he is but also realistic it's like how cruel life is the way he tells this story he makes you sit there and kind of deal with the generations changing and turning around seems to be a lot of the problems people have with this film is that it doesn't age well is that it shows Bakshi's faults as a storyteller as much as it shows his prose he does have to have certain leaps in the film that kind of get things to connect but that doesn't happen too often I do think it ages fairly well but it is a film that ends with American popular music in 1980 it does feel like Pete he's kind of rushed in there where the other generations it feels like those those characters have enough time to have kids and would have probably be more interesting if Tony had gotten off drugs and changed and then Pete probably could have been more of something in the grunge era but as this film came out in 1981 and didn't know the grunge era was gonna exist I can't really fault it for that it probably yes would have made more sense for his kid to be an alternative rock kid who grew up through the 60s love era and then their parents eventual divorce in the 70s or 80s but that's couldn't happen in 1981 so it's a little silly to say that but it does feel a little rushed I like the character of Pete on the cases for the DVD it's usually just his picture although he's not really the star of almost like 80 minutes of the movie 75 minutes maybe a lot of the movie is without him that started when they re-released it on VHS in the late 90s almost like he's almost selling Pete rather than the other generations of men which I find a little disappointing I like the poster for the original release because it kind of shows all of the times and how everything changed and uh, we went from having a vaudeville style of entertainment to entertainment becoming more corporate and you see how Pete gets discovered and becomes a rock star. In fact, she's very much acknowledging the corporatization of the music industry and how that eventually happened. Maybe 1980 and that time is the perfect time to end the story because then music became corporate, then you had MTV, then you had corporations owning record labels. So maybe it perfectly kind of worked out in a way. It does feel a little weird when you have these generations going and you're going from one story to one story and you're seeing time keep changing. It does feel like, could this just go on endlessly and eventually I'll see the destruction of mankind? But that probably would be a little too ambitious and a bit silly. I like Ralph Bakshi. I think a lot of times maybe I respect him more than I like a lot of his films, but after watching this, I kind of have a lot more respect for him. This was a really ambitious film and I think it succeeds on that ambition because it's not just about being hip and cool. It kind of is almost like he didn't care he just wanted to make a really finely made film certainly I really like fire and ice that would come after this and I'm more of a fan of his fantasy stuff but this shows you more of what he could do it makes me regret he couldn't do even more during his career or he's still alive that he could maybe do more with the rest of his career but American pop is a really finely made epic animated film if you look at it in juxtaposition to other film epics I think it says a lot more than you'd really expect from it it's not the most perfect film it certainly rushes through a lot of this stuff and you don't really get to spend a ton of time with each of the characters but the little vignettes you get throughout it are very impactful and meaningful and I think Bakshi understood how to tell this kind of story and how to tell a story through multi-generations and really say something both about American music and about the times we lived in in America up to that point and how us as people were a reflection of those times and how those times affected us really examining a family and how as much as things change they still stay the same it's probably an epic I respected more for what it was saying even if it rushed to say all those things so if you have seen American pop and you would like to talk about it then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to Music